Alright, so welcome back to our YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe if you're new. And just before we get into today's video, I want to give a massive thanks to every single person that has subscribed to the channel because we just reached 1k subscribers just recently and it couldn't be done without you guys. The support and everything over the last 9 to 10 months I believe we've been doing this has just been immeasurable. You guys are absolutely amazing. I really love you know, posting some videos for you guys, helping you guys learn and teach you guys how to play the game correctly. That was the whole point of this YouTube channel. That's why I made the channel was to help players not get scammed by this game and to also help teach you guys how to play this game. Um, so a massive thanks to every single one of you. And yeah, that's why we're doing this video for all 1k subs because I did say in Discord that I was going to do a positioning guide uh, when we hit 1k, when we reach 1k subs. So here we are. We're going to be doing a positioning guide in today's video. We're going to be giving you guys some of the tips or rules on how to position your characters correctly because this is extremely, extremely important in the game. Actually game changing. If you position your characters correctly, over your opponent you can change the outcome of the battle you can just win it's that simple because the characters will perform way better than the enemy characters um, so we're going to be giving you guys tips on that and we're going to be showing you guys as you guys can see a few examples on how to position your characters correctly as well so they're the two things we're going to be going over in this video a very important video um, so i hope you guys really enjoy the video but first, let's go over the tips and rules on how to position your characters correctly. Alright, so this is going to be our character positioning placement guide rules or tips. Uh, factors to take into consideration when positioning your characters. Extremely important. Number one and number two are the most important things on this list. Number one, read your character's skills and abilities. I cannot emphasize this enough. Reading or knowledge in this game is very broken. And extremely important especially their passive skills ultimate skills sometimes their basic skills um, but it's mainly going to be passive alt skill basic skill in this order you must read your characters abilities and skills because a lot of characters must be in the correct position in order to activate certain skills massive example Jen Frankie passive if he's not in the middle row position two or five you're positioning him incorrectly. You should go ahead and read his passive because this is what a lot of new players do is they don't actually read their characters and they don't position their characters correctly and then they complain why they're losing the battle. So make sure you read your character skills and abilities. Number two, another important thing, make sure you are using the correct adventure souls for your characters as they are a big factor when positioning your characters. Massive, massive, massive thing. If you're not using the correct adventure souls, you're obviously not going to be positioning your characters correctly. So make sure you're using the correct adventure souls on your characters. A few examples, straight dive. You want to use straight dive as early as possible. So the character with straight dive on your team, you want to use that character as early as possible. Position one preference, because you get the buffs for your whole team much earlier and therefore your team will deal way more damage. Uh, so make sure you're using straight dive early as possible and if you didn't know you can only use one straight dive adventure soul on one character per team it doesn't stack you can't have straight dive on five characters and it all stacks it does not stack you can only have one per team so position one preferably for a straight dive uh, the next adventure soul or the last one we're going to be going over is weakness soul you kind of want to use weakness soul later in the order of your team to give more time so you can output more debuffs so that that character can deal more damage so you mainly want to give this for a damage dealing character like maybe sd law and you want to use them in the back row so that's what you want to do for number two uh, so that's number two right there make sure you're using the correct adventure souls and then number three and four basically go hand in hand team comp position plays a big part in determining your character's positioning because different team comps require different positioning. Even changing a few characters in your lineup can change the overall position of your crew. Because this goes hand in hand with the next one, determining if your character should be front or back row. Front or back row, some characters can go front and back row. 
and your team composition will determine that whether they go front or back row so that's why team composition is huge make sure you're reading your character skills abilities correct adventure souls and then for these two uh, we will be doing a couple examples later in the video just to help you guys understand what exactly this means but as i said earlier in the video positioning is game changing if you position correctly you can change how well your character how well your team or crew perform throughout the battle hence changing the outcome of the battle you can go from a loss to a win just by changing the positioning of your team and lastly as i said at the start of the video 95 percent plus players i'm not even joking when i say this actually have no idea how to position their characters correctly they have no idea all right so that's the tips and guide rules on how to position your characters correctly uh, number one and number two very very important uh, number three and four we're going to go over in just a sec all right so let's go over some examples on how to position these characters correctly all right so we're in the team maker we're going to be just going over some of these characters and some of the meta characters we're not going to be going over all the characters in the game um, just some of the meta characters and we're going to be showing you guys some examples of the tips and guides that we just went over so gem frankie number one should always be in position two or five so let's just put the valentine's day and army in first position he should always be in the second position or the fifth position in the middle row now the reason for that is because if you read his passive skill uh, he buffs adjacent crew and the one behind actually so you should always have him in the middle or if you have him first he's only going to buff this person here and this person here so in order to maximize his passive he should always be in the middle row and you'll find 99 percent of players will run him in the front row you can actually run him in the back row a lot of people don't know this but you can actually run him in the back row it's mainly used to counter back heavy back row hitters so like potential six nika luffy uh, because the rebound damage is massive um, I've seen multiple times Nika Luffy potential six alts the entire back row and just dies to rebound damage because if you don't know you cannot be revived from rebound damage you just die it's as simple as that so that's what a lot of people do is they run general Frankie back row in order to counter potential six Nika Luffy um, so you should always run general Frankie in the middle row now, just while we got Valentine's Day and Army in the first position, the reason why you always want to run Valentine's Day and Army, or even Zeus and Army in the first position, is because they're ultimates. They have Air Spirit, so they're going to be ulting turn one. Now, Valentine's Day and Army applies weakness on the whole enemy team or silence. Obviously, there is a chance you'll see reduces healing AoE, so you want to get that first, so your opponent doesn't heal as much or you can actually deal more damage if you put them into weakness their stats get reduced by so much and you do way more damage so you want this out as early as possible same as Zeus Nami the reason why I always say Zeus Nami front row because she reduces defense and a block rate and her ultimate is AoE so if she just reduces the defense of the whole enemy team and block rate your entire crew is going to be dealing way more damage than her being back row with like a weakness assault or a burst impact build you're, you're going to be dealing way more damage your whole team overall will deal way more damage if she's first position than if she's last position that's why i don't understand why people run her if you if you have potential six of zeus nami you can run her third position um just because of the way her alt works with being odd and even you get both at the same time being potential six so you can use her as third or second um, but yeah that's how the two namis work you're always going to use sd on those two uh, because they're amazing sd characters with their ultimates um, another character we're going to be going over is luffy taro i don't know why people do this but people run luffy taro first position it makes no sense and you should never run this guy first position the reason for that is obviously these people don't read his ultimate skill he gets splash damage on his ultimate if one character on the enemy crew is already dead so if it's so if you kill someone and it's 5v6 he'll get the splash damage and for each crew that's already died on the enemy team he'll do even more and more splash damage so you don't want this guy first position never never ever run luffy taro first position 
if you want to run him front row, you should run him third position. Um, because front row is really good, keeps him alive to stack up even more damage. So you either run him third position or you run him back row. Um, typically you can run him late as possible because then he'll do even more splash damage. And he has a higher chance of getting splash damage. Um, so it's up to you. Another one, Blackbeard. Um, Blackbeard with his ultimate, let's just put a couple of characters down. Uh, Blackbeard, you want to run last position. The reason why people run Blackbeard last position is because when he ults, he makes it so one character on the enemy team takes no damage for the entire turn. They take no damage. That character obviously can't use any skills or anything. They can't do anything for one turn, which is absolutely amazing. And then he puts them into dark, and then he puts them into weakness afterwards. But you want to get all your damage done on all six characters before he ults because if you put him first you're only going to be damaging five characters because he ults and then you know that character can't take any damage so that's why people run blackbeard last position uh, another one why we've got sir croc here people run sir croc last position if you read his ultimate skill he gives rage back for every character so obviously you want all your regular characters to use their ultimates and not waste the extra rage that he's giving when he ults. So that's why people run Sir Croc last position. And then Nick Luffy is another one. You want to run Nick Luffy front row. The reason for that is because you want to, you want to play around his reflect. His reflect is his biggest thing. Is his biggest uh, skill in his kit. So front row just keeps him alive as long as possible to get more and more reflect chances. Um, so that's why everyone runs Nikoluffy mainly front row position, so he gets even more reflect uh, chances. Another big thing about front and back row is typically if you're going second a lot, you do want characters with invincibility or revive to be in the back row because you know Sea Kings are very OP, um, and going second you'll probably most likely get one shot. So you definitely want to use characters if you're going second a lot that have invincibility and revive in your back row. That way they stay alive and your whole back row doesn't just get one shot turn one. So that's another tip uh, that we didn't go over previously in the video. Um, but some team comps, you know, some people might have Nami, Val, Jen Frankie always here. You know, Rochi, you might run Luffy, Taro. You might run Marco. You might run Sir Croc. Um, obviously Marco and Luffy Tari, as we said, can be front or back row, but because of this composition, we're running like Jen Frankie, we're running Nami, Val, we're running Orochi, they should be back row here. They can always obviously be front row, but since we're running this composition, this team composition, this is where they're going to be positioned. Um, so that's just an example of team composition and the positioning of your characters. It's like... Chopper as well. Chopper can be front row. I actually do prefer Chopper front row of like burst impact. Um, but does but since he does have his passive, he can be used back row. So it really depends on your team composition. Um, so if we're not running like, so if we're not running Luffy Taro, you could put Chopper. I'd probably put Chopper here um, to apply the debuffs. So let's just say this is the team. They, the way that I would position this would be, obviously you want Chopper to be far left, back row. Now you can run Luffy Taro here, or you can run Luffy Taro last uh, for more splash damage. And to keep MDD alive a bit longer. Because he can just die to Sea Kings. But yeah, it would either be Luffy Taro here, or it would be Luffy Taro here. Uh, the, that one completely depends. Some of it is preference. Um, that would be a preference, depending on whether you want him front row or back row. Um, yeah, that's a preference example right there. Um, for me, he would be back row just to keep MDD alive a lot longer, because he does have invincibility. He doesn't have invincibility. Um, so that's a preference example. But as I said, it really depends on your character's skills, abilities, whether you're running the correct Adventure Souls or not, and your team composition. They're the three major things, because... You know, I could go over all the team compositions, put like six characters, rotate through all the teams, show you guys all the examples. But uh, we'll be here forever. Yeah, just make sure you're reading your character's skills and abilities. 
you're using the correct adventure souls and you have the correct uh, team composition that you want and you guys should be good to go. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the rundown of the character positioning guide on how to actually position your characters correctly. I really hope it was helpful and I really hope to see you guys in the next video.